This video will try to analyze several multimodal texts in order to demonstrate how the relationship between power and sexuality is portrayed in the Star Wars saga, featuring Princess Leia and Queen Padme. Both women begin their trilogies in positions of power, more specifically, political power. Leia as a princess and Padme as a queen turns senator, and both end up being characterized by their romantic relationships that is mirrored through their wardrobes. So, let's start from the beginning. In the 1977 classic, A New Hope, in Leia's first appearance, we see her in a long, floor-length white dress, which traditionally represents purity and innocence, and sporting her iconic braids. Still seen as an authority figure when introduced to us, trying to send secret messages to the Rebellion that could help them against the Empire. Flashing forward to The Empire Strikes Back, we still see Princess Leia with her tightly laced hair, but in a more form-fitting outfit. Notice the bluer hues in this scene, the warmer colors, the way the light always seems to just catch her face at the right angle. Notice the music that plays in the background, soft like a melody. In this scene with Han Solo, he refers to her by her title, but in a mocking tone. He also tries to turn her need for professional aid into something regarding their romantic feelings for each other. Uh, come on. You're imagining things. Am I? Then why are you following me? Afraid I was going to leave without giving you a goodbye kiss? I just assumed it's a woman. I can arrange that. And you use a good kiss! Um, excuse me? What did you just say? And concluding Leia's journey in the original saga, Return of the Jedi, this film features her in the crazy iconic metal bikini. Now, this particular outfit is very significant, for later in this film, we see her literally in chains being enslaved by a man. Now this particular scene with the gangster Jabba the Hutt challenges my analysis because while wearing this costume, Princess Leia kills him with the very chains that are enslaving her. However, I have kept this in my analysis because it deals less with the sexuality versus power in the films and more with the relationship between consumer and producer. Through the original saga, The Return of the Jedi made about $22 million more than the original. As the movies became more popular, Leia, the only female character of any substance, became more and more feminine with each film. Could it be because the producers wanted to attract more viewers? Were they trying to narrow down the target audience that consumes the most sci-fi films? Males? Star Wars episodes 1 through 3 show up a decade after the original trilogy, and are prequels, that feature Anakin Skywalker before his turn to the dark side and Queen Padme Amidala. Through episode 1, Phantom Menace, Queen Padme is seen as super powerful, sitting at the head of the table, and gaining the respect she deserves. She has a severe makeup, conservative neckline, bold colors, and portions of her face are usually covered. In episode 1, Padme and her appearance is not meant for the male gaze. And although I know that that is not actually Queen Padme, the same goes for the woman standing behind her. Conservative necklines, hidden faces. In episode 2, Attack of the Clones, when Padme is put under the Jedi's protection, her wardrobe and makeup become more submissive. We see more form-fitting dresses, exposed shoulders, bare backs, and then... Well, yeah, kind of speaks for itself. The second set of trilogies were more marketed towards children, particularly male children. Explains this, doesn't it? Right. The Force will guide us. Oh, Maxi bit the Force. Well, that smells stinky. So if that's the case, what exactly are we teaching males about heroines in movies? What are we teaching girls about how they need to change their appearance for men? From a technical standpoint, all Star Wars movies, the music and cinematography, capture this as well. The music becomes softer and the melodies more feminine. The cameras focus and span the body more. In episodes 1 through 6, the women that were being privileged were women in power. There are no other women of considerable notice taking part in this conversation. This leaves out the women of lesser status and their stories throughout all the action that took place in the films. The cultural model that is being normalized is women having to be more sexual and feminine in order to promote more monetary gain and doing this by accenting the male gaze. To disrupt this, women need to appeal to more women, and their clothes should make sense for the scenes that they're in. And this can be seen reflected in other movies of our time. You're telling me she's going to want to save the world wearing that? 
I don't think that was her choice. However, that's much better. Now focusing on the most recent Star Wars movies, episodes 7 through 9, things changed. This time, it was holding more conversations about gender equality and how women are being presented in films. It did a great job of combating the male gaze through costumes and camera work. Rey rarely changes her appearance, since what matters more is her character development. She doesn't need to appeal to men with her looks. The story's not about that. And then Phasma. She's all decked out in full body armor, looking like her bad self. She's powerful and fierce, and she doesn't need to show skin to prove it. These episodes did a great job in including more diversity with female characters. They're not just bystanders waiting to be saved or hoping for the best. They are the action. This analysis of a galaxy far, far away has pointed out arguments that could be made about the way their texts portray the relationship between sexuality and power, and how costume choices, cinematography choices, and music affect this. But, credit where credit is due. With the ongoing social conversation regarding feminism and gender equality, they have fled from the dark side and are beginning to portray women in the manner they deserve.